All right, Pete Michaels. Well, we got another special clip from when Joe Franklin was in the studio here on August 23rd, 2012. He made an appearance on the Late Night with Johnny P show, and it was it was a gas. Uh, we had a packed out audience, and, and and Joe was such a gentleman. So, control room, let's roll a little bit of that clip. Joe, thank you for having taking the time out. I to just want to say it's my pleasure, my thrill, and you know, people always ask me. What's the future for talk show hosts? I say, you know, uh, while I was on the air, there were 500 talk show hosts came and went in that period. 500 came and went during my tenure. I, I always say the main thing is sincerity. And once you learn to fake that, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Th then you got it made. Then you got it made. Good, good. <laughs> I, uh, I've more or less invented the uh, talk show. When I was just a kid, I was choosing the records for a man named Martin Block. Remember the Make Believe Ballroom? And one day, Channel 7 called me. They said, Joe, we like your voice on the radio, and we're considering lighting up in the daytime. There was no daytime TV. TV was only on the air then from 5 o'clock at night till Sermonette. There was no daytime TV. They said, Joe, if we give you an hour a day, what kind of a show might you do? I said, well, I do a show of people talking nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball. They said, Joe, you're out of your mind. You can't do a talk show. On, the word is television. You've got to give them vision. You've got to give them seltzer bottles, baggy pants, pratfalls, <laughs> burlesquets. Uh, so I said, well... Rock and roll was coming. I said, how about I do a show of kids dancing to records? They said, Joe, you're out of your mind. Who's going to watch kids dance to records? Dick Clark comes along and becomes a billionaire. But I defied them. I think I did the first pure organic from the bones TV talk show and had a half a million guests since those uh, days, half a million. Uh, and by the way, Johnny, I want to say, I like your personality. You got that likability. You got, you got that nice personality. And people always ask, are there going to be more talk show hosts? As long as there's TV, there'll be a need for more t TV talk show hosts. And, you got that smile. You Thank got, you. You got that smile. Let but, me, let's hear it for Johnny. Yeah. 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 It made me blush, Joe, when he said that. I didn't know what this was. I was like, So, but my next guest up, he's another friend of Joe's. He's in the entertainment business. He does a lot of different things. Let's give it up for Vincent Paco, P.I. <laughs> Vinny Paco, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Did you wax your head before you got here? Yes, uh, every day I wax my head. <laughs> All right, good. What's going on? Well, I was on a Joe Franco show about maybe 10 times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, in the 80s, I had started my private eye business, and uh, I forgot how he found out about me. He had me on. Orenstein used to call me up. Hey, Vinny, Joe wants you on the show today, All right? And I always brought a couple really pretty girls that worked for me. And he, always, he loved them. He loved them. <laughs> and he always just say, hey, you, got, you, you got good food in the green room? He had nothing in the green room. Not even water. Come on, who what, has food? One thing about Joe, he was, he was very generous with his time, but not with money. <laughs> I took him to, Ray, he wanted to go to Rayo's restaurant, because the famous Rayo's. So I took him there one night. And I took him with a friend, uh, Arnold, his sidekick. Arnold Martin? No. Yeah, Arnold Martin. Okay. And uh, he was in his glory. He loved it. And as we're leaving, I almost had a heart attack. He picked up the bill. What did he do, pick it up, put it in his pocket? That's no. about, no, he <laughs> went in his pocket, he paid. I said, I couldn't believe it. Uh, Joe was just a great guy. He always had, his, had me on the show. One day, he said, I'm going to have a show just for you. I said, yeah, all right, sure. He did. He had a whole show just for me one day. He brought a couple of his friends on, and we were talking about private eye stuff and stuff like that. And we had a lot of fun with him. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a great guy. He was a great guy. That's great. Well, I actually do stand-up comedy sometimes, and yeah. he had me as a host on his, on his uh, uh, Charlie O's, and at the, um, Steve Garin, his assistant, whatever yes. you want to producer, had uh, a gig with, uh, thank God it's Friday, that place, to have a basement, and Joe, Joe Franklin had a comedy club. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I used to bring about seven, eight comedians on there, and they, they appreciated me bringing them on there. And we had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. it you have any special memory or any fun time that you had with Joe that you could just Yeah, every time I was on us. Joe's show, he always had some young girl he wanted me to track down for him. <laughs> oh, it's just a friend. I want to put her in the business. I want to take her under my wing. I said, what are you, a vulture? You're going to bring her <laughs> under your wing? And he went, no, no, it's just a friend. I lost her number. Yeah, meanwhile, he didn't have the number. I, I got it for him. And, but he was, a, he was a sweetheart with everybody. He really, really was. I didn't know who you were. When, he, when you mentioned your name a long time ago, to somebody, I go, what about this guy, uh, uh, What's it, Vinnie Parker, P.I.? He goes, oh, no, he's great, 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 great. Well, I got lucky. I mean, I, I was on his show. I started, I guess that's how I started getting a little bit in show business, if you want to call it that. And uh, after that, uh, a few years later, uh, my daughter, who's a private eye, was in the newspaper about Charlie's Angels. Oh. And next thing I know, producers are calling us, would you like to do a reality TV show? I said, of course, you know. 
girls on the show and everything. So we did a show called Parko P.I. And we did a little pilot in my office. Um, and next thing I know, I'm on the jazz cruise. I go to jazz cruise every summer. And I'm on the jazz cruise. I get a phone call. But yeah, they bought the show. I jumped. I almost jumped off the boat. Mm. <laughs> and uh, he said they bought nine episodes, which is pretty good. Great. And then after we did a few of them, they said you have the whole season, 13. We did a couple of years of that. Unfortunately, it was caught TV. And we're in the Time Warner building. Time Warner bought the network and fired me. Right. So I want you to know, I might burn this building down by the time I get out of here. No, you I better not do that. I might, I might. Turn, I, daddy, turn. I got a little beef with that. But no, they, were, no. they were pretty good to me. You can't. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to be going to England for another, the Parkour PI show. It's going to be on, um, um, I'm kind of excited and scared at the same time. Um, they want me to film three weeks on in England and then come back for two weeks and go through here. So, you know, I have a business to run. My daughter's very good, but I'm, I'm the the guy, you know, I'm the, the boss of the company. So I'm a little nervous about it. So uh, we'll have to see what the contract says. Hopefully they'll pay me for the time I lose. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. listen, all the best. And I want you to come back in the, in the fall and come see us, and then we can really sit and chat. If I'm not in England. Yeah, whatever. If not, I'll get you on the New Year. How's that? All right. You got it. Cool? I'll be there. Yep. All right, everybody. Vinnie Parker. P.I. <laughs>